Let's just take a look at ruler and column guides in designer. So these allow you to align objects uh, to uh, other objects and to uh, guides and grids on the page, even to the page edges and margins. So with this example in mind, I want to add some uh, text in this white area on the right hand side. But first of all, I want to add some ruler guides. And to do so, first of all, I want to enable rulers and that we can do that from the view menu enable show rulers and from here we can drag from this horizontal ruler downwards to create a horizontal ruler guide and you'll see there's a readout there which allows you to precisely position that guide so that was 105 millimeters here's another one at 200 millimeters and we'll add a third just here and we'll just give it that there. Okay that's great. So now I want to introduce a vertical ruler guide by just dragging away from that vertical ruler and then positioning it at in this instance we'll say about 215. And another one uh, just here. Say 280, I think. Great. Okay, so now I want to show you another way of adding guides, and this is via the Guides Manager. If I just enable this right now, we'll see that it will report the position of all of the horizontal and vertical guides that I've just created, uh, but also allow you to add your own guides via this dialogue instead of by dragging them from the ruler. But I wanted to show you this particular horizontal guide here, this 95.9 guide. And that's this, this guide here. Now, because I didn't get the positioning absolutely accurately, I can just simply just edit that to 96. So now I've got nice round values and equally 280, we can fine tune, just in case your hand's not quite as steady as you'd like. Now one thing I want to show you is how you can change the spread origin, and that is this particular point here, uh, right in the top left hand corner, uh, currently it's set to zero and zero, but if I just, um, just drag from here, you can see the ruler changing and this spread origin uh, being repositioned down and being snapped to this particular point on this um, vertical guide. Okay, it will snap straight into there as you see with that red and green coloration I can release. By bringing this dialog back into view you can see that our X and Y position is now set to 215 and 105. And as it happens all of the guides are recalculated in relation to that new spread origin position. Incidentally, this is also called the ruler origin as well in uh, some applications. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you is that up to date, moving guides, etc., has been done via the move tool. You can see it's moving that there. But in fact, you can move all the guides using any tool at any point in time. But you won't be able to do it directly on the page in case you move a, a particular object accidentally. So to protect this, you can go to the ruler itself, this vertical ruler, and you can see as you hover over with any tool selected, this uh, little guide here, I can reposition that on the page. There we go. And I won't be able to pick that up here at all. It's not allowing me to do that. If you're happy with the positioning of the guides, you can finally go up to the view menu and enable lock guides. You'll find that when I come back down here using either the move tool or any other tool that I can't drag those guides out of position. So ultimately, now I've got my guides locked and in position, I can introduce uh, some text and position it uh, exactly where the 
uh, guides uh, suggesting and snap them into place. Similarly with this uh, heading text, just drop them in and we've got precise alignment and positioning. So that's ruler guides sorted out. So now let's just show you the column guides. Now if we go up to the view menu, you'll notice there's a show column guides option and this is enabled by default. This allows you to display column guides but by default there's only one column and that's the entire width of the page. Now to change that we can go to the guides manager and we could change the column value to say three. And we could change the number of rows to two or even three. And you see we're building up kind of a matrix or a, a grid if you like of um, different columns and rows by which we can uh, put designs onto. Just change this gutter value to say 50 pixels. And the coloration or this uh, grayscale coloring is not very contrasty. So I'm going to change that and make it a little bit darker. You can see that just there. If I really wanted to, I could opt for a, a style of outline, which changes from the grayscale fill to just kind of like a, an outline uh, grid. But I prefer the fill just there, so I'll just jump back to that. Uh, the document was currently set up with a margin of uh, 20, so I can change that if I want to. All the way around. 10. 10. And the spread origin, in a similar way to how we saw the ruler guys, can be edited as follows. In this instance, I'm just going to knock the row value back to one. I'll just close this down. We'll actually use this um, column guide set up to place some imagery and some text. So I'll just select this text here, these images rather, and I'll just drag down on the page. Like this one, I'll drag across, and I'll add some text into here, in this case on some frame text, sorry, artistic text. And some frame text. and we'll just populate that with just some placeholder text for the moment.